for the past two years, I've been doing street photography in London. I've been walking the city with my camera and only my camera and taking pictures of everyone that interests me, every scene and every beautiful ray of sunlight that I see. I've been walking the city every single weekend for the past two years and in that time I've learned a lot of things. I've learned a lot of people skills, I've learned confidence and I've learned so much about my camera and how to actually use a camera to capture life. So I thought it might be a good idea to take what I've learned from walking the streets with my camera all these years and actually put it to good use and maybe teach some people how to do good street photography. So this is essentially what that is five tips to improve your street photography from me, an 18 year old kid. Okay, so the first tip, and yes, I have changed locations, is prime lenses. It's really important when doing street photography to use prime lenses. Prime lenses are essentially a lens that cannot zoom. It's a fixed focal length, so it's fixed at a certain zoom point. So in order to zoom in or out, you have to physically walk with your feet. A few advantages to prime lenses are that they are sharper. They're a lot sharper, so you get much cleaner images. They're often lighter, they're smaller, they're easier to use, and also you get a really nice depth of field. What that means essentially is the aperture can go wider to a lower number, say f1.4, f1.8, a lot of prime lenses, and that gives a lovely blurry background, which is great for isolating a subject in street photography. A prime lens that I absolutely love to use is this. It's for, can you see it? The Sigma 30 mm f1.4. Because it's 30 millimeters, it's a lovely um, focal length. So everything you want in frame is in frame and I know it like the back of my hand. I could walk up to any scene on the street, point this thing at it and know exactly what's gonna be in frame and what isn't. And that's just a benefit of practicing with what gear you have. This shoots at f1.4, so as you can see, the images from it are absolutely beautiful. The depth of field is amazing, the subject is isolated, and that is why I love prime lenses. Another lens that you might know, and you might even have it if you basically own a camera, is this one here. This is the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM. It's nicknamed the Nifty 50 because, if you couldn't see, it's really small, really nifty and it's 50 millimeters. This is the cheapest uh, lens of the type on the market and it retails for just over hundred pounds and it's a beautiful lens for street photography. I'd highly recommend it. I'd say that one of the most sort of fun and abstract and artistic things that I've learned doing street photography is that in essence, it's really important to shoot through something, whether that's railings, glass or anything that makes up a frame. When you shoot through something, it actually directs the viewer's eye to a certain subject that you want to emphasize. So there's a frame within a frame, and that can be really helpful for making the people look where you want them to look. So for example, I shot this photo of this man, and it was just around the time of the Extinction Rebellion protests. I was walking down the steps to the tube station, Charing Cross, and I was walking down the steps, and I noticed that just up here, there was a man that was like looking down everywhere. And I locked eyes with him. And without saying anything, he looked down at me and actually looked straight into the lens. And I snapped the shot through the railings. With this picture, there's not much going on. There's a man looking at the camera. There's a bit of green up top, that's about it. But shooting through the railings really adds a dimension of depth to it. As well as that, one of my favourite things to shoot through is glass. There was this photo that I took in 2018, and it was essentially just a lady walking into a park in London, and that would be boring on its own. However, I shot this shot through glass, through a reflection. There was this golden plaque up on the wall, and I positioned the camera so I caught real life, that half, and that half the reflection, and it makes the photo look very, very heavily edited, but I promise it was not edited and it was real. As well as creating lovely reflections, one positive of shooting through glass is that the people can't get you. Combining an actual frame and glass, you have a window, and as well as creating nice reflections, I feel that shooting through a window can be really, really fun. So for example, I took this picture here of a man eating with chopsticks uh, in a restaurant. He was just positioned perfectly in the window frame. So I thought, hey, I'll get it, because realistically, there's glass in the way, he can't get me. So I took the shot, I got it spot on of him looking right at the camera, and I noticed as well, in the reflection, there was a lady looking 
at me from behind me. So I actually got two people looking directly at me and one of them was actually through a glass. So that just shows how shooting through something can really help add depth and dynamics. So for my third point, you join me in my garden because I wanted to take you along with my daily exercise, which is a walk around a small garden in East London. So the third point is essentially that it's really important to be confident when you shoot. The point of street photography is to capture how people are naturally, it's not to get staged photos. So to get candid photos, something you can do, a trick I like to use is called the tourist trick. Essentially, you hold a camera up to the person you want to take a photo of, but you point it slightly past them. If they see you, take down the camera, look just beyond them, and they won't know you're taking a picture of them. The photo that actually got me into street photography in the first place was this picture that I took around Liverpool Street. And it was of this man, um, he was in, it was just down the side roads and this man was an industrial worker and he was stood in the back of his lorry or a van or something. And basically he was loading stuff in and out and I thought it would make a really good shot. So I waited, I camped the shot and I held up the camera to him took the picture of him I was st literally standing there for about five minutes and he was staring right at me but every time I saw him look at me I would take down the camera and look just beyond him and take a picture of just beyond him so he didn't think I was looking at him and because of that he didn't question me another one of my favorite pictures that I took was of this man and his daughter in Soho they were in a pub and essentially just sat looking like they were sat looking out the window and this does also tie into shooting through things. It was just really scary to walk up, point a camera at this man and take a picture. But doing it, he didn't really care. And this goes back to that picture of the man in the cafe on his own, the restaurant. Um, he didn't care, no one cared. So if you walk up to them and take a picture, about 5% of people will actually talk to you. And if they do question you, just just delete the picture, like, it's fine. I think a lot of people aren't confident in street photography because basically it's really hard to walk up to a stranger and take a picture of them. But I found that the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. So the more you go out, the more pictures you take, and the more you get to know how people work on the street, the more, more safe you feel doing it. And you feel that people won't actually like question you on it. So yeah, basically, be confident, people don't care. On to point four. Number four is be patient. I found that in street photography, so many people, especially a lot of YouTubers, they, they get a camera, they walk around and they just shoot randomly whilst walking. That's really not the way to do it. A big inspiration of mine is Cartier-Bresson. He took some of the best pictures in France and then when he moved to London, in London. He was kind of the pioneer for me for street photography, teaching patience. What he would do, is he would walk the streets and he'd find a lovely composition. When he found that composition, he'd set up shot and he'd wait there. He'd simply wait for someone to walk into frame. So he wasn't hunting down people, he was hunting down compositions. And I think that's a really important way to do it. There's this one Cartier-Bresson photo that I absolutely love. And it's one where he stood at the top of some stairs my hands are doing some crazy things. He was stood at the top of some stairs and he found a lovely composition of the stairs winding down in a curved road up top. And he just waited there with his camera. Bear in mind this is like a massive camera at the time, so he probably had a tripod. But he just waited there and he waited. And eventually a cyclist went by, perfectly in frame, and he snapped the shot. And because he prioritized the composition over the subject, the subject just stands out perfectly. When I was in Belgium, um, Bruges to be specific, I found the canals were beautiful and I wanted, I really wanted to get a shot of a boat. And I tried for a long, long time running up and down the canals, trying to catch boats. And eventually I just gave up doing that because it wasn't going well. So I decided to essentially be patient. I found a bridge. I hung off the top of the bridge with my camera and I waited and waited and waited for genuinely about half an hour hanging off of a bridge. And eventually the tourist boat went underneath and I snapped this shot. 
There's also this shot that I took in Amsterdam and I waited a long, long time to get the cyclist to actually be in perfect frame for this one. As well as this shot here that I took in Covent Garden for which I had to set up and wait and hold a camera that weighs about a kilogram like that up to my face for 10 minutes which is a lot more harder than you think and the man came through the door with his amazing hat and his yellow tie and I just struck gold and I absolutely love this photo and I'm so happy I was patient and I waited. I have this book here full of interviews from Cartier-Bresson that my girlfriend got me and there is this one quote in it and I'm, de I'm determined to find it okay Okay, I found the quote, but it's quite long, so bear with me. Okay, you should never overshoot. It's like overeating or drinking too much. You have to eat, you have to drink, but too much is too much, because by the time you press the shutter and you are ready to shoot once more, maybe you've lost the picture that was in between. That's a damn good quote. The most important thing when taking pictures is the light. The light is what hits the sensor, the light is what goes through the lens, and the light is what makes the image actually an image. It's called photography. Photo, photography. It's called photography. Photo meaning light. Graphy meaning. So the most important thing is where the light is and what the light's doing. It can be really easy when you're out on the street to walk around and focus so much on the people or the objects and the structures and what they're doing rather than focusing on where the sun is shining. A tip that I would give is when the sun is low, late in the evening, early in the morning, when it's kind of a sunset or a sunrise, it's really important to walk away from the sun. If you walk with the sun to your back behind you, then everything in front of you will be beautifully lit. So anything you see is how it will look in the picture. Whereas if you walk into the sun, you won't see anything. A lot of people would recommend uh, shooting golden hour. And as much as golden hour can be really flattering for portraits, golden hour is the, for those who don't know, it's the last hour of the day before sunset when the sun is at its lowest. It creates a lovely sort of golden rich hue. And it's really soft. A lot of people love that. For street photography, I don't. I tend to go for harsher shadows and as you can see in a lot of my pictures they were taken around midday between like 12 and 2 p.m when the sun is really high up and it creates beautiful shadows coming down onto those buildings that's the sort of light i love i'm getting a call from my girlfriend so if she wants to phone me whilst i'm recording she can contribute towards the video do you have any any tips that i can use for the video i don't know i just circle around blocks and get lost that's what i like to do so you're your top photography tip is get lost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I took this picture in January 2019 and it was of this lady. She was probably on her work break. She was stood um, just in a shaft of light, just around the corner. I walked up to her and I said, hey, I love your coat. Can I take your picture, please? And she was, she was willing. She said yes. I took the picture and it was only after taking it and stepping back that I realized how beautiful that light was and how I'd nearly missed out. So I took a lot of pictures and this was the best one, in my opinion. You can see that the subject is beautifully lit with really harsh sun, yet just next to her, just across that diagonal line, is thrown into darkness. Turning that street corner and finding that shaft of light coming off a building is what, in my opinion, street photography is all about. It's so important to find light that will help you isolate your subject and just bring out the best that you want in your photo. It's also photos like this one, that without that shaft of light coming down the steps and hitting the floor and just about encompassing the people that are stood there, it would not look nowhere near as dynamic and as nice. It really singles out the subjects and that's why it's really important to find good light. That can be said for this picture I took near the River Thames, in which it was shot in golden hour and the light just perfectly glides across and hits the man that sat there leaving everything else in darkness. Another example, this is one of the oldest pictures I ever took, which was just off of a French train station in the middle of nowhere. I went for a walk across the tracks that were not live tracks, obviously, and I found this amazing little train shelter, like an old uh, old depot. There's derelict, there's nothing there. And there was just this beautiful shaft of light coming in and hitting the tracks. And it threw everything else into complete darkness. 
and I just thought it made a really, really lovely photo, and it did. So thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it, and I hope that you actually learned something about how to improve your street photography. And if you did, then let me know. If you didn't, then still let me know. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe so you see all my videos come up. Like it, you know the drill. I won't bother you with it. Thank you. Ugh.